Today's daf we're going to learn is Pesachim Daf Kafgimel. Today's daf is dedicated by Michael, Alexander, Ariel, and Hallie Kahan in honor of their mother, Ruth Kahan, on her birthday. Her inspirational commitment to Daf Yomi has been unsurprising to those who know her as she shows a similar level of care and dedication in all areas of her life. We wish her many more years of happy and healthy learning to come. And there's more by Ruth's sister, Je ah, with love from all your children, and by Ruth's sister, Jessica. Thank you for introducing me to Tahadran Dafyomi. I may not understand it all, but I love knowing that across the continents, you and I are learning together. Love, Jessica. So happy birthday, Ruth, from many different directions. The Daf is also dedicated for another birthday in honor of Evyatar Schwartz on his birthday. Evyatar recently started learning Gemara. May your curiosity and determination continue to be a source of pride and joy. Happy birthday, Tari, from all of the Schwartzes. So a lot of good birthdays today. Okay, we are gonna start now. Um, and Daf Kaf Gimel, okay, really at the bottom of Kaf Bet Amud Bet. I'm gonna do a very brief review, which is that what we're dealing with is um, we have this machloket, Chizki on Rabbi Yaval. We started on two dapim ago about where do we know the chametz is forbidden to benefit from on Pesach. We had two answers given. Chizki said because it says lo ye'achel in a strange form, which comes to indicate not just can you not eat directly, but it's kind of an indirect way of eating, meaning you can't benefit in any way. Then we said that Rabbi Yavahu said no. It's not because of that. Anytime it says lo yocha, lo tochlu, lo tochelu, it always includes any kind of forbidden, not just to eat, but also to benefit from. Then we started with a slew of questions. We had three questions against Rabbi Yavau, where we brought something that said lo tochlu, and then we said, but yet it's permitted and, but to benefit from. And then we brought two questions against both of them, where it said lo ye achel, and yet it was forbidden, but we had to prove it from some other verse and it wasn't from the typical, okay? So the last one we were up to, and I'll already tell you the structure for today, which is gonna be exactly the same as the structure for, for yesterday, which is we're gonna start again with another three questions just against Rabbi Abau and then another two questions on both of them. Okay, so the same exact structure. I'm not sure why the Gemara didn't write, if I were organizing it, I would have done all the questions just against Rabbi Abau and then all the questions against both of them. But for whatever reason, the Gemara does it like this. And now we're gonna see, um, we're gonna continue our discussion. So before we get started with the new question on Rabbi Yavau, we have to finish up, we were in the middle of this one. We were learning about Orla, which is you can't eat fruits for the first three years that they're, that they're planted. And then we said, it says, lo ye achel, but yet they learn the fact that it's forbidden to benefit from, from a different verse, from the fact that it says, Orla, or Altem, it says Orla, the root Orla three times, which comes to teach you that you can't, we said um, you can't benefit, you can't color with it, and you can't light a candle with it. Now, the Gemara said, right, the whole reason, um, Rabbi Shad, we said, why is it different? Ah, because here it says Lachem. Because it says Lachem, you would think that it's allowed for you, and we're going to see this theme coming up a lot today about some sort of lachem for you. Once it says for you in some way in that verse, it's, we're gonna think that you can benefit. That's why it needed the orla, orla and that repeated three times to teach you that it's forbidden to benefit from. Were it not for that, you would have been able to learn it from the other place. So we'll get back to a question on that. But right now we're gonna say, um, So now they say, wait, but if it said those psukim, so the if lachem is not to teach you, normally we would say lachem is to teach you it's for you. You can, you can have it for yourself, meaning you can benefit. If it's not to teach you that, then what is it coming for? So they say lachem it's for the following brighta, and we're going to have two opposite approaches. Orla generally is you plant a tree. And where do you plant a tree? In your house, in your property. What if you plant a tree somewhere on the street? Okay, like I have on my street, all sorts of trees that the municipality planted. Is there orla for that? Okay, there's a debate what we're going to talk about, natua lirabim, a plant, that, a tree that's planted for the masses to use. Now there's two options of what this is. Either it's like I described where the municipality planted a tree. It wasn't planted by an individual, it was planted by a group for the public. Or it could be I planted it in my field, but a tree that I was, that was meant for the community. Okay, I decided I'm going to donate a lemon tree to the whole community and I build it near the front of my house. So I plant it near the front of my house so that everyone can benefit from it. 
So either one of those, it's not clear which one this means, right? There's a debate among the Rishonim, but anyway, one of those. So lachem lirabot et hanatua lirabim. According to Tanakama, comes to teach you that laws of Orla apply also there. You might have thought maybe it only applies for individuals. Lachem comes to say anywhere where it's where it's yours. Now yours is also plural. It could be something that's relevant to many of all of you. Rabbi Yehuda Omer lahotziat hanatua lirabim. Rabbi Yehuda thinks the exact opposite. The the whole Isor Hana'ah is only for, okay, Nunitatem, the whole, all the rules of Orla really don't apply for a tree that was planted in pub, for the use of public, of the people. So now we're going to have to understand what the reason is. But now at least we understand that word Lachem isn't coming to teach you it's permitted for you to benefit from Orla. No, it's coming to teach you there's an exception, either there's an exception to the rule or there's something you might have thought was an exception to the rule and yet it's included. So now the question is, how do they both get from the word lachem to the exact opposite conclusion? One says it's included in Orla, and one says it's not included in Orla. So, and yes, this is like lachem by lulav, that, that teaches ownership. Every time the word lachem appears, it's extra, it's coming for something, okay? We have to figure out what it is. It's not exactly the same, but it's, but it's similar, right? Lachem, again, here it's saying, even if you don't really own it. But it, but it connects to you. So it's not the same way of using the word, but it's the same idea that we have this word. Why is it there? Why are you adding lachem? So my time at the Tanakama, dichtiv unitatem. Okay, in the beginning of the section, it says, when you plant. Now, nitatem sounds like, okay, now, I said it when you plant. Now, you could be understood as you singular or you plural. So that's exactly going to be the debate between them. Unitatem, according to Tanakama, liyachid mashma. Lirabim lo mashma. Unitatem sounds like an individual. When you, you as an individual, plant a tree. Now, katev rachmana lachem. So if the first part of the verse seems to indicate just you, then it has the word lachem, which is also plural. It's going to therefore be adding something that wasn't before. Before it was just one. Now it's going to say lachem lahaviyatana tu alirabim. To include now not only what we started off with, an individual, even community. The Rabbi Yehuda, so what's Rabbi Yehuda going to say? Because he has the opposite approach. He's going to think, Unitatem mashma ben lerabim ben liachit. Nitatem seems to say everybody, okay? Whether, individual or whether, right? Nitatem, you, you is the general you. When all of you plant your trees and therefore even plant trees for everybody. Now, remember, Rabbi Yehuda, Dafka says, you're not obligated or less, so hold off. Then comes the word lachem. Now, what does lachem seem to imply? Also, everybody, because it's in plural. Ben yachi, ben rabbi mashma. Now, both come to include everybody. Well, when you include and include, it's like a double negative. So, ein riboy achal riboy, ela lemaet. Okay, um, so they say, sorry, I skipped a word, a few words. Havi riboy achal riboy. This is what we call an, inclus an inclusive statement followed by another inclusive statement. And then we go into laws of how Sukim or Darshan, how we, ex how we extrapolate them. So now we're gonna say, Ein riboy whenever you have an inclusion and then another inclusion, it must mean it's including, it's actually gonna be exclusive, okay? Like a double negative. So therefore comes Rabbi Yehuda and he says, even since we started in plural and then we continued in plural, that must mean that we're coming to say it doesn't apply, okay? So that's how they each come to different conclusions. The main point there was, what do we do with the word lachem if it's not coming to say it's permitted to benefit from, then it must be coming for something else and that's what it's coming for. Okay, like I said, we're now gonna start our three questions against Rabbi Yaval. The hare truma, okay? The truma, the gift you give to the Kohen. The Rahmana Amar, the Torah says, v'chol zar lo yochal kodesh. Anyone who isn't a Kohen is not allowed to eat truma. Utnan. So now what does it say, lo yochal? If it says lo yochal, what does that mean? That means, according to Rabbi Yavau, you can't eat and you can't benefit. Utnan, it says in the Mishnah, marvin l'nazir biyayin uli Yisrael betruma. Oh, this is something we learned already. What did we learn? That you can make an eruv for a nazir. Remember eruv tchumin, you put down food to allow you to walk outside the city, right? That allow you 2,000 cubits from where you put your eruv. Let's say you're a nazir and you're not allowed to drink wine you can make an Erev with wine. And if you're a Yisrael and you can't eat truma, you can make your Erev with truma. 
even though you can't eat it since someone else can eat it there or drink it. Therefore, it's considered food for your purposes, for the purposes of Eru. So what do you see here? I can benefit from something that's forbidden, right? The truma, right now our focus is truma. In a minute, we're going to switch to Nazir. Right now it's truma. I can benefit from truma even though I'm not a Kohen. So how can that be if it says lo yochal and Rabbi Abau says lo yochal includes even forbidden benefit? Again, we're going to have the same theory. It says trumatchem, your truma. Your truma means somehow it's connected to you, meaning it's yours, meaning you can benefit. So it's true, it says lo yochal, and lo yochal generally means you can't benefit. But if it has a word of, possess, of, of possession, that it belongs to you, even though it doesn't belong to you because you have to give it to the coin, that must mean that you can benefit. Shelachem tehe. Okay, it can be yours, meaning one can benefit. Ve'idach. Now we have to always go back to Chizkiah. Chizkiah, who thinks lo yochal is only can't eat, and it doesn't include benefit. It's not forbidden to benefit from. So what is what does Chizkiah do with the word trumatchem? According to Rabbi Yavau, trumatchem comes to say it's yours. You can benefit from it. According to Chizkiah, you don't need that to tell you that. It's already obvious. So trumatchem dechol Yisrael kama. Okay, trumatchem. It just the pasuk was just saying all the trumot of the Jewish people. It's just a way of speaking. It's a manner of speaking. It's not trying to teach you anything more than what it seems to be saying. Okay, that was the first question. Second question. Again, it's really the fourth question on Rabbi Abau. Now we're on the fifth. Baharei Nazir, derachmana amar, mechartsanim va'adzag lo yochal. Okay, it says from the pits to the dregs, right? Like all the parts of the, of the grape, they cannot eat. So now they say utnan, and yet it says in the Mishnah. So again, lo yochal would imply can't eat, can't benefit, according to Rabbi Abba. But it says in the Mishnah, we just read, ma'arvin le nazir biyayim. You can benefit, nazir is allowed to benefit from the wine and use it as his eruv tchumen. So amar marzutcha, shane hatam damarcha nizro. Again, there's going to be a, pos- a word indicating possession. It says, now it's not exactly about the grapes, but it says, kol yemei neder nizro, all the days of his nizirut, which means the nizirut is to him, which means something about it is for him. Again, it's a little bit looser here, the connection. They say, shelo yehe. It means it's for him, meaning even things that are forbidden to the nazir, the nazir is allowed to benefit from, right? Can't eat them, but yes, can benefit, can use it for his eru. That's one answer. A different answer is, Ravash Yamal, kadosh yihye gadel pera se'ar rosho. He will be holy and he has to grow his hair long. So what do you learn from here? Gidulo kadosh, his hair becomes sanctified. Ve'ein davar acher kadosh, but nothing else becomes sanctified, meaning anything that's sanctified normally is, permi- is forbidden to benefit from. So now we're going to say, oh, well, this is sanctified. Only the hair is sanctified and forbidden. That comes to teach nothing else is, meaning everything else that's forbidden to the Nazir is actually not going to be forbidden to benefit from, like the grapes or the wine. So they say, wait a minute. The Pasuk says, this will be sanctified to you, your hair. Doesn't say, and nothing else will be. Okay, so why are you, that's a, that's a weird drasha. Doesn't connect there between any of the other items. So they reject that answer and they say, we go back to what Marzutra said, which is again, you have the word Nizro, it's his, which seems to indicate his and not belonging to anybody, right? Meaning he can actually benefit from items that are forbidden to him. Okay, so we answered the Truma, Truma Trem. We answered the Nazir Nizro. Now we're going to go to Chadash, the Hare Chadash. Remember the Chadash? We learned this not so long ago. It's about the new crop that grows, right? That until you bring the Korbana Omer on the 16th of Nisan, you're not allowed to eat from the new crop. However, we're going to see the Rahman Amar, the Torah says, the Lechem the Kaliba Carmel, Lo Tochlu. Remember, Tochlu, don't eat. Rabbi Avau says that includes even benefit. And Ad Etzema until the day where you bring the sacrifice, Vitnan, and yet it says in the Mishnah, Kotzer La Shachat Uma Achila Behema. So it says in the Mishnah, you can cut it for fodder and give it to your animals. So here you see, you can benefit from it. I see someone asked about the fact that they didn't ask what does Chizkiah do with the Pasuk Nizro. I assume, by the way, again, it's 
not every sugi is exactly parallel. On a bunch of them, they ask about chizkiah, on some of them they don't. It could be that the word nizro isn't so much connected with the grapes, and maybe that's why they didn't think it needed some explanation according to him. Or you could say sometimes the way the Gemara is edited, not everything is 100% parallel. Just like in general, whoever edited this edited in a strange way that they did the questions against Rabbi Abba, then the questions against both, then the question about Rabbi Abba, the questions against both. So it could be, it was just a conglomeration of a bunch of different things that they didn't all have the exact same structure. But it's a good point, it's a good thing that you're pointing out that not all of them address what is Chizkiah do with that verse. Okay, so now it says by, um, by Chadash, that you can benefit, even though it says lo tochlu. So same answer we're going to have. Amar Rav Shmaya, Shane Hatam de Amar Kha, Ktsirchem, Ktsirchem Shalahem Yehei. Again, it's going to say, Ktsirchem, it's yours. So yours means it will be yours. You can benefit from it. The Idach, okay, now here it does go to Chizkiah. What does Chizkiah do with that? Ktsirchem de Chol Yisrael Mashma. Ah, we're going to, he's going to say, Ktsirchem means your heart, right? Everything you reap. It just is talking in the regular form of speaking to all of the Jews. Okay. Next question, and as I said, we finished now the three questions we had from the Truma, Nazir, and Hadash. Now we're going to move to questions on both Rabbi Abau and Chizkiah. So now we're going to find Psukim where it says Lo Ye Achel, and now um, we're going to say Vahare Shratzin. Dirachmana Amal, Sheketzhu Lo Ye Achel. So by Shratzim, it says, This is despicable, it shall not be eaten. Utnan, and yet it says in the Mishnah, Sayade Chayava Ofot Bedagim, Shiniz Namnula Heminim Tmeim, Mutarin Lemochran Lenochrin. If I am, I am uh, hunting, okay, or I am capturing fish, birds, anything like that, and in my net, let's say, or while I was shooting, I also shot a Sheket. Uh, sheretz. So if I shot a sheretz also, what am I allowed to do? And I've already got it, right? Let's say it's in my net. So in that case, I'm allowed to sell it to a Gentile, okay? Even though normally you can't, but in this case, you're allowed. So what do you see here? Ah, you're allowed. So there you see, there's no isor hana'a. If I could sell it to a Gentile, it should be fine. So why does it say lo ye achel, which according to everybody would include benefit, would be a problem. Shane hatam damakra lachem. Again, there it says lachem. And therefore we say, shelachem yehe. Okay, I'll read you the verse. Um, v'chol sheretz, right, where is it? V'chol sheretz hasheretz la'aret sheketzu lo yeachel. Now it actually doesn't quote the pasuk here. Where does it say lachem? Let me just find it. Um, sorry, one second. Okay, this is in Vayikra. Okay, this is, that was Vayikra Yud Aleph Mem Aleph. This isn't right nearby, okay, but thank you, Gita, I see you have it. It's Vayikra Yud Aleph Yud Aleph. It's actually 1111, I believe. That's what it says here. Vesheket Yelachem. Okay, so again, it says Lachem. Because it says Lachem, that means you can benefit. Well, now they say, wait a minute, there's something strange here. Because you can't really benefit from Shretzim. Okay, what's the issue? If you happen to be hunting and you capture them, then you can, but not in a normal circumstance. So they say, if the lachem is really coming to permit, okay, so they say, um, sorry, uh, then it sounds like you can, if you want, go ahead, hunt shratzim and kill them and send them to, right, and go sell them. But you can't do that. You can only do it if you're already were trapping other things and you trap those also. So what do they answer? Okay, there the verse says yihiyu. Okay, it says sheket yihiyu lachem. Okay, this is the Pasuk in Vayikra Yud Aleph Yud Aleph, where it says a sheket will be for you. Now, yihiyu, they dart, so lachem sounds to indicate, seems to indicate it's for you, you can benefit, but yihiyu means Okay, that means they retain their original status. So it becomes this in-between. They retain their original status that theoretically they should be forbidden to benefit from because it says, lo ye achel. However, they're a little bit lachem. It's got this two things pulling at it. That's how we get to the middle ground, which is only if you already trapped them when you weren't intending to, but they got trapped anyway, then you're allowed to sell them. But you're not allowed to go ahead and hunt them and then in order to sell. 
So now, Lechizkia, now we're back to Chizkia. Lama li lemichtav. Okay, here comes a question on Chizkia. If you have lo ye achem, to teach you it's forbidden bana, and then you have lachem, to say it's permitted. So lama li lemichtav lo ye achem, umayte lachem lemishriye. Right, this is kind of a long-winded. It starts with lo ye to say it's forbidden. And then it comes back to lachem, to say it's permitted. So why don't you just simply say, lo lichtav rachmana, lo ye achem, velo baye lachem. Right. You didn't need the lo yachel. It could have just said, sheketz hu lo yochal. Should have just said, don't eat it in the regular form. And then you wouldn't have understood it's forbidden to benefit from. And then you wouldn't have needed the lachem to come teach you it's permitted to benefit from because you would have just known it. Right? This is like going you know, around your head to scratch your ear. Right? It doesn't make any sense. Why bring a verse that says it's forbidden and then bring another verse that says it's permitted? So they say, amar lecha chizkiah, so he says, this is written in this way, first with lo ye'achel, then with lachem to permit, right? Lo ye'achel to forbid, then that to permit, to teach you my whole rule. In other words, he says, this proves my rule. This proves, this is coming in this weird way where it's very long-winded. It's to teach you that normally lo ye'achel would include benefit. Only because it says lachem, it doesn't. But normally it would be forbidden. And that, he says, that's where I get my rule from. So he uses this as his proof for his theory. Okay? And that's why the Torah has to go out of its way to say things that are seemingly unnecessary. Now we're back to another question on Chizki and Rabbi Yavau, our second and last question. Vare chametz. Okay, chametz is a weird question because remember we learned lo ye achel. According to both, what does that mean? forbidden to benefit. And that was where we started. Chametz is asur on Pesach to benefit from. But now we're going to learn that there's a different opinion. There's Rabbi Yossi Aglili who thinks that actually Chametz on Pesach and what we call Chametz Avar Lava Pesach, which is if you find Chametz on Pesach or you find Chametz after Pesach and you didn't do Bitul and you know, you're stuck, you have to burn it. Why do we burn it? Because it's forbidden to benefit from. We're now going to see that Rabbi Yossi Aglili doesn't think that it's forbidden to benefit from. So when we're going to then ask the question, how does he learn this? If both Rabbi Yavah and both Chizkiah think, because it says, lo ye achel, it should be forbidden. So ha'arei chametz. De'rachmana amar lo ye achel chametz. V'tanya, and it says in a brayta, now they quote, they didn't quote, the, they didn't quote the beginning of the brayta. The beginning of the brayta is the regular opinion. The chametz is forbidden to benefit from. Comes Rabbi Yossi Aglili, Omer, tamer l'atzmecha. You should be surprised with yourself. Meaning, what are you talking about? Chametz is not forbidden all seven days of Pesach. No, it's just not forbidden. So how is he going to derive that if lo ye'achel, according to everybody, will include benefit that's forbidden to benefit from? So he says, What do we learn from lo ye'achel? That, again, we have the lecha for you. Shalcha ye'he. Right? It will be yours, meaning you can't see it, but it is yours, meaning you can benefit from it. So that's where he learns it from. So now we're going to have to have a big ping pong. And if you look at the chart at the bottom of the first side, I charted out here each, right? They each learn, right? So Hanami Chametz, Rabbi says it's allowed, Chachamim say it's forbidden. Then, Lo Yerael Lechaseor, according to Rabbi Yosei comes to tell you there's no forbidden benefit. What do the rabbis do with that, right? We're going to have to say, what do the rabbis do with that lecha? And then we're going to have to say, well, that halacha, where does Rabbi Yossi learn it from? And then where do the rabbis, what do they do with that verse? And we're going to keep ping-ponging back and forth. So, Rabbanan, and what do they do with that pasuk? So the rabbis say, oh no, the lecha comes to teach you, you can't see your own chametz, but you are allowed to see, remember we learned this, and this is good review from stuff we learned in the beginning of the Masechet, which is, you can see chametz that belongs to other people, right? If there's some Gentile in your house and he comes into your house with his chametz, it's no problem. Or if it's shel gavoy, you have something that's sanctified, it belongs to God, it doesn't belong to you, it's fine if it's in your house. V'idach, so now, if the lecha, lo yira el lecha seor, according to Rabbi Yossi Aglili, is to teach you, it's permitted to benefit from, and he can't use it to learn that drasha that the rabbis just learned about, you can see chametz of other people, where is he going to learn that from? The idach tre lecha ktivi. Remember it says, lo yira elecha, it says it in two psukim, if you remember, it says it in shmot, and it says it 
truth is, it's unclear here because eventually we're going to say there's three because it says, so it says it twice in the same verse. And then it also repeats itself. That's in Shemot. It also repeats itself in Sefer Dvarim. Same pasuk. So basically they're going to say, oh, it says lecha twice. So because it says it twice, we can learn both things. One is to teach you it's permitted to benefit. And the other is teaching you that you can see chametz of other people. V'idach. So now we're going to have to say, according to the rabbis, what do we need two for? If you don't need one to teach you it's permitted to benefit because you're not allowed to benefit. So what do we do with it? And yes, Rabbi Yossi really believes that you can benefit from your own chametz on Pesach. Okay, you, you can't see it, but you but it's not a problem to benefit. Again, you have to say, what does it mean you can't see it, but yet you can benefit? But imagine, you know, you can, I don't know, right? It's a little, it's his approach is a very interesting approach. It goes against what we're so used to. This is a good example of some things that we take for granted and the Gemara, not everyone assumed. And he has another interesting shita about, um, I'm just giving you some examples. Rabbi Yossi Aglili himself also said that, that meat, that chicken and milk is allowed. Okay, he thought that that was allowed. So if I remember correctly. Anyway, here's an interesting uh, shita of his. So now, idach. So what are the rabbis going to do with both lechaz? Remember, we learned about if the nochri is yours, you, he belongs to you, you kind of conquered him. Let's say he's your slave. So even then he can have chametz in your house. Okay, that's what the second lecha is coming to teach you. Now, idach, what is, where does Rabbi Yossi Aglili learn that halacha from? It appears three times, as I said before, so we can learn it all three things, okay? So now, uh, so what, now we're back to Chachamim. Why do you need three lechaz then, according to the rabbis? You need one for seor, one for chametz, because that's what it says. Why do you need seor and chametz? Because chametz, right, regular bread is a problem, but it doesn't make something else leaven, right? Whereas seor, which is the, the sour, you know, the, the leavening agent, the sourdough, so that can let, cause other things to leaven. So it's to teach you that even the seor, or again, it's a matter of where you do it, but the, the forbidden is on both. And I guess I'm not sure which direction they go, but whether you could say that they're both forbidden to benefit from, right? That that's what they would be saying. It's to cover everything. Okay. Not just the so now, that was an attempt, again, to try to understand Rabbi Yavah and Chizkia, if they say lo yachel should include everything they had, is Rabbi Yossi Aglili permit it because of the word lecha. And then it was just a matter of what is everyone else darshan from all those other verses. Now we're going to go back to like a, a zoom out into Rabbi Yavah and Chizkia's approach. So the Gemara says, lema kitanai, maybe in fact the machloket that they have that we've been discussing all along, lo yochal or lo yachel, which comes to include. Um, so the question is, um, maybe really this was a Tanaitic debate and we're going to show Tanaim because it's always nice if you take Amoraim and you say what they're arguing about, actually people before them argued about. We're going to bring a machloka Tanaim. It'll take a little while till we understand the connection and then they're going to reject it. But they're going to start off by suggesting that maybe this is the same machloka. This is a very strange verse. It's a verse by the chelev of, uh, of an animal, of a nevela. Okay, a nevela is a, is a non-kosher animal, right? It's an animal that died, wasn't shechted properly. It could be from a kosher animal, but wasn't shechted, just died on its own. We already learned that a nevela is forbidden. And what did we learn though? That you can benefit from the meat of a nevela. Now we're gonna talk about the chelev. The chelev is the forbidden fats. This is something that's forbidden on all animals. The only place where it's permitted is um, the only place where it's permitted is in the Beit HaMikdash. Now, what do we do with it? And there's actually a connection between these things, and I'll mention a few connections. The parts that you burn on the altar are the chelev of the animal. And those same parts, these fats, okay, there's, there's shuman, which are certain fats, and then there's chelev, which are other fats. The fats that we burn on the altar are the ones that are forbidden for people to eat. And that's why chelev, by the way, only applies for animals that are domesticated and not undomesticated animals, for behemoth and not chayot. Why? Because only behemoth were brought as sacrifices. There's no undomesticated animals that we use for sacrifices. So there's a clear connection there between the chelev that we burn on the altar to the chelev that we're not allowed to eat. So we're not allowed to eat chelev. Now, usually we assume that means this is just like the gid Is it only 
on kosher animals, the chelev is this extra prohibition, or there's also an extra prohibition on nevela. So the Pasuk tells you, chelev nevela, okay, you can't eat the chelev of nevela either. Okay, there's a special verse that tells you that. Chelev nevela, the chelev trefa, not just nevela, also trefa, if it was an animal, even if you slaughtered a kosher slaughter, but the animal was gonna die anyway, can't eat that animal. So the chelev of those animals, ye aser lechom it says you can use for anything you need, but you can't eat it. Okay, you can use lechom lecha. What they're going to darshan is, why didn't it just say yasel lecha? You can use for work. Why do they have to say lechom lecha? So now they're going to say yasel lechom lecha. Matam ulomar lechom lecha. Why do they have to say for all work purposes? Sheachol lemelachet kavoa yehi mutar lemelachet hadyot yehi asur. You might have thought since in the temple, now each is going to use the temple in a different from a different direction. The first opinion is going to say, you might have thought that since in the temple we burn the chalav on the altar and we use it, maybe there it will be permitted. But if you're outside the temple where chalav is entirely prohibited, maybe you wouldn't be allowed to. Okay, therefore it says, therefore it teaches you, that's Yibre Rabbi Yosef Glili, that you can use it even outside the temple for benefit, right? You obviously can't eat it. Rabbi Akiva Omel, she'acholam alechet hediyot yehei tahol. Now he's going to go in two different directions. Number one, he's going to think it's not talking about benefit. It's talking about purity and impurity laws. And when he's going to be more strict in the temple. Why is that? Because purity laws are much stricter in the temple. So you might have thought, lemelechet hediyot yehei tahol, that it won't become impure for regular issues. But but maybe it can become impure for temple purposes, because there we have to keep a higher level. Therefore, it says meaning it doesn't become impure at all. The Rabbi Yossi Aglili, the Tuma Utara lo eat strich krah. He eats strich krah, the Isur vehetil. We're now going to say, why did each one say what he said? Rabbi Yossi Aglili thinks you don't even need a verse for laws of purity and impurity. Therefore, the verse was needed for benefit. And Rabbi Akiva is going to say the reverse. You don't need a you didn't need a verse to teach you it's permitted to benefit from. So now, and therefore, why did he say the Pasuk was talking about Tuma and Tara? Because you didn't need the verse for for Isur Vahater, meaning for benefit, right? Because it's obvious that you can benefit from it. Why is it obvious? Right? Because it says, right? What is a holotokluhu? You can't eat. But you can benefit. So it must be Rabbi Kiva holds like Chizkia. The Lotochlu would not include. So now we're going to read that inside. My love, Baha Kamifilge, is this not the root of their machloket? To Rabbi Yosia Glili, Savar Lotochlu, Mashma Baini Surachila, Baini Surhana'a. Rabbi Yosia Glili thinks that a whole Lotochlu includes everything. So if you're going to have something that now comes to, uh, to um, permit, what's it going to permit? What was forbidden? What was forbidden? Is Surhana'a. Because that's Rabbi Avau, that any lotochlu comes to include benefit. So therefore, he's going to say, right, lotochlu mashra beni sorachila beni sorana, and therefore, ki ata krala mishriye benevela, right, when the pasu came to permit, behana'a hu da'ata, what must it be talking about? Ah, it permits what was forbidden from the achol lotochlu. Now we're going to say, oh yes, but you can actually, this is an exception to the rule. The Rabbi Akiva sabar, isorachila mashma, isorana'a lo mashma. He says, no, no, no. Lotochluhu, like Chizkia, is just Isorachila. Therefore, you wouldn't have even thought that it was forbidden to benefit from. Therefore, when it, it when it permits something, it must be permitting something else. What must that be? Choma and Tahara, right? Laws of purity. Kriyatakra. So when the Pasuk came to permit something, Lituma Ulitaha. Okay. And then you would say that Rabbi Akiva and Rabbi Yossi Aglili disagree exactly on the issues that Rabbi Abal and Chizkia disagreed about. But as I said, the Gemara is going to reject this and says low. No, you could read this differently. Really, this verse could be read like Rabbi Abba. Everybody thinks it originally sounded like it was forbidden entirely. But this is the root of their machloket. Now, remember what we're talking about here. We're talking about the chelev of nevela. Remember nevela. We started with nevela. What did it say by nevela? A dead carcass. You can benefit from the meat. You can right, either give it to your dog, give it to the gear, give it to the, sell it to the nofri. You can benefit from it. So the question is, do we treat the chelev of a nevela like a nevela itself? Or do we say that nevela is only a law for the meat and not for the forbidden fats? 
So that's what we're going to read right now. Rabbi Yossi, so theoretically, Nevela should have been forbidden based on the verse. However, Rabbi Yossi Aglili Saval, Kishu Hutra Nevela, he Hutra, when Nevela had this het hair, you can benefit from it. It was only for the meat, but Chelba Vigida Lo Hutru, but the Chelev and the Gid Hanashe of a Nevela is not, is not, um, was not permitted to benefit from. So therefore, Ki Itzdrich Kras. So now when the verse says, however, Yaseh Lechom Alacha, what's it coming to say? Chelev Nevela would have been forbidden. Oh, we're going to allow it. And that's why he thinks the verse is permitting benefit. Because without that word, you would have assumed it was it was forbidden. Because it's not treated like nevela, because it's chelev. It's not nevela. Nevela only is talking about the flesh and not about the chelev. Therefore, when the pasuk came to say, something is permitted. What did it permit? What was forbidden? And therefore it came to permit benefit. When they permitted Nevela, they permitted also the Chelev and the Gita Nashe. The forbidden fats and the sciatic nerve were all permitted as part of, right? The Gita Nashe of the Nevela was all permitted. Remember, we saw Machloket about the Gita Nashe yesterday. We'll make reference to this again. And therefore, when the Pusuk is coming to permit something, that was already permitted. So therefore, it's not permitting benefit. What must it be permitting? Tuma and Tara, right? So the Tuma Vitara. So therefore, when the Pasuk came, keep strict crowd, when the Pasuk came to permit something, it must have been permitting Tuma and Tara. Okay, laws of purity basically saying this Chelev cannot become impure, not in the temple and not outside of the temple. Now we're going to question Rabbi Yossi Aglili. Rabbi Yossi Aglili. So now, according to him, Nevela was only the meat. That was permitted from the Pasuk about Nevela. The chelev, we now have this verse. And this verse specifically permits the nevela because it says, the, the chelev of a nevela is permitted to benefit from. So, do you think that he thinks the gid and is forbidden to benefit from? Because there's no verse there that's specifically going to permit the gid, right? According to the other opinion, um, who is it, Rabbi Akiva, that's all one and the same, right? It's Nevela includes the Gid and the Chelev. All those are permitted from the Nevela verse. But according to Rabbi Yossi Aglili, is he going to say that the Gid is a sword to benefit from? If you remember, yesterday we saw that Rabbi Shimon does forbid the Gid. And, Rabbi, and uh, I think it was Rabbi Yehuda who doesn't. So, Ibait Ema HaChinami Dasul. Yeah, you could say he thinks it's forbidden. Or Ibait Ema Maitela Bakapachomen. Alternatively, you could say if the Chelev is permitted, then we're going to make a kavachomer and say if the chelev is permitted, then obviously the gid is permitted. And why would you have a kavachomer? Uma chelev shanush karet mutar bahana'a. Chelev is very serious because you get karet, which is a very serious punishment, right? It's punishment by God where you get cut off. We're not sure exactly what it is, but it sounds like early death where your children die. Different opinions about what this means. But in any case, it's quite serious. The rabbi sh- and therefore, gid she'eno anush karet, gid is just a regular low tase, so you'll get lashes for it. That's much less severe. Low kol shekane, right? Are we not going to say all the more so, right? That if, if the chelev, which is so strict and yet is permitted to benefit from, then obviously the gid. So that's what we're going to say. That's the second answer. So now they question and they say, wait a minute. For rabbi Shimon de Asal, what's rabbi Shimon who thinks that the gid is forbidden to benefit from? If chelev is allowed, how could he not say that the gid is going to be allowed? So he could knock out this kavachomer by saying, and this is why I prefaced it before by explaining this, about the chelev, There's a special heter for chelev because it only applies to domesticated animals and not undomesticated animals, where the gid is more severe because it, it includes all animals, even undomesticated. So therefore, it's got something that the chelev doesn't have, and therefore you can knock out the kav homer. And that's why, according to Rabbi Shimon, the chelev and the meat of an avela will be forbidden, will be permitted to benefit, but not the gid. So now they say the idach. So what's the other one going to say? That is a good way to knock out the kav homer. So they'll just say, right? It's kind of like what glasses you're looking through. Uh, we were just focusing on the animal, and by animals, it's not permitted, and by animals, chelev is more severe, so the gid will say is also going to be, um, if that's permitted, then this is also permitted to benefit from. Okay, now again, we're going to zoom out for a minute. 
Now that we brought all these questions, and Rabbi Yavah, and Chizkiah, we questioned and we said, but in the end, really, in the end, where do they really have an issue? It breaks down to the Chametz Bepesach, Valiba de Rabbanan, who forbid Chametz Bepesach to benefit from, and Shor Haniska, Valiba de Divrakol. And the Shor Haniska, according to everyone, because in both those cases, it says Lo Yachel. And in those cases, specifically, the Rabbi Yavau is going to learn it from his whole general rule anytime it says Lo Yochal. And according to Chizkia, it's going to be specifically because in both those cases, it says Lo Yeachel. Okay? But now, because all the other cases that said lo yachel, in the end they were permitted. They were just permitted because of other verses. Remember the lechem or the this or the that. So now, they say, so therefore, chizkiah de nafik lemi lo yachel, v'rav yavau nafik lemi nevela, right? So each one's going to learn it from a different source. But michti bein lamaru bein lamaru, surim bahana'am, my benayu. But in the end, they both forbid it. So really, what's the difference bahalacha between the two? What does it matter if you're going to learn it from nevela or what does it matter if you're going to learn it from um, from Lo Yechel. So they say, Ika Benayu, the main difference, Valachan, this is like a, a real, you know, after we go through all this, there's, there's one little point that they disagree on, which is, Chulin Shenishchatu Ba'azara. Remember that case? So, which was derived from the Trefa, Basar B'sadeh Trefa, Lo, um, Lo Ye, I forget how, right, it said, uh, the verse, right? Right, it was Basar B'sadeh Trefa. Um, So I have to find the verse here. Right. So remember what they said. What is the oto? Why does that go to the kelev and not anything else? So we said either it was to basically say only nevela, not anything else is permitted. That was Rabbi Yavau. Chizkiah had to say this was to teach you the chul and shenishchatu ba'azara are forbidden. Only, right, remember that weird case, the ubar that stuck its paw out, brought it back in. That is forbidden to eat, but will be permitted. Therefore, something else though, that's like that, but the reverse will be forbidden. Okay, so now, um, sorry, hoof, not paw. Um, okay, so now let's go back to our case. So that's what they say in the end, right? So, he thinks lo yachel is to exclude anything that says lo yachel, right? And the oto is coming for chulin shenishchatu ba'azara, to teach you that those are forbidden. Rabbi Yavau savar oto l'mi'ute hane, the word oto here, la kelet ha'shachun oto, is to exclude everything else. Everything else is permitted, right? Is, uh, sorry, is forbidden bahana. Chulin shenishchatu ba'azara, lav da'orait anini. He thinks the chulin that were slaughtered in the temple are not da'oraita. And therefore, right, because that's, you don't need this drasha for that because they're not even Doraita. And that's the main difference between them. What we're now going to start, and we're only going to start it here, we'll continue tomorrow, is we're going to start to see that there's a different approach to this question. So we brought two approaches, where we get it from. We're now going to see a third, but we're not going to actually see it today. We're just going to have the intro. So someone was sitting, a rabbi was sitting in front of Rabbi Shmuel Bar Nachmani, Rabbi ben Levi. He said in the name of Rabbi Yosho ben Levi, how do we know that all things that are forbidden in the Torah? It sounds very much like Rabbi Yavau. How do we know that everything that was forbidden to eat is also forbidden to benefit from? And what do we mean everything? And now all of a sudden we're going to see maybe this is just like, because in the end, remember we said, it's really not all of them. It's really just Chametz Bepesach B'Shor and Iskal. And where do we get it from? So they say, let's suggest, Tipogle mi, Lo yochal, lo yeachel, sorry. So they say, or no, mi lo yochal. Lo yochal, isur achila mashmale, isur ana'alo mashmale. You could try to learn it from lo ye, I'm trying, I just want to check, is it lo yeachel here? Um, one second. Tipukle mi, yeah, maybe you could say it from lo yeachel, like Rabbi, um, like Chizkia. So they say, what do you mean? Lo yachel? Yeah, it's a weird form, but in the end, it really just means you can't eat. It doesn't mean you can't benefit. So he doesn't like that answer. Then they suggest, typically, why don't we learn it from the Nevela verse? That was the one about the ger and the nochri. And we'll say, he wanted that. That was to teach you a different halacha. 
So why don't you explain the way Rabbi Yehuda learned it out, which is that verse about the Kelev, specifically the treifa that you find in the field can go to the Kelev, nothing else. But he could say, now we go back, he could say like Chizkiah, that that pasuk was for right? But that's what we're learning that for, in which case it's not free to teach about anything else. So now right, with the, that one's going to be forbidden by Hana'a, but what about everything else? So now we're going to stop here because it kind of starts this verse and we won't understand it through till we get through tomorrow's stuff. So we're going to stop here, but he's going to basically bring a different source as to where we learn that Hametz of Pesach and Shor and Eskala are going to be forbidden to benefit from. That's it for today. Happy Hanukkah, everyone. Enjoy your day.